It's Lorna, good to see you. Now, uh, how worried are you by this drop or this um, stagnation? Uh, if we hadn't got some great companies that were actually booking the trend, then I think we would be very worried. I think that this is a wake-up call. We know that when government and industry focus on a target, they achieve it, and that's why we do this annual report. This annual report by the pipeline is the only count that exists and the most comprehensive count of the numbers of women on UK FTSE 350 executive committees, their roles and their value. And this is only the second year that we've done it and it's proved its worth in terms of doing it because most people thought, because of the noise, you know, policy, that therefore we would be achieving things and well on to target. And it's shown that actually we've taken the eye off the ball. Why do you think it's happened? I mean, is it just down to the eye being taken off the ball, people being obsessed by things like Brexit and, and the election and all the rest? I think that we didn't realise how much focus it took to move the dial on on executive directors. Now, most of us would agree that the executive piece, who runs our companies, is the most important. If you look at the consistent evidence from IMF, McKinsey and our report two years running, there is a bottom line benefit. And in this low growth economy, you cannot rule out the gain that having a better balance on your executive committee brings your organisation. I mean, why does this happen, though? Why are there these problems? Is it just that women are... I mean, quite often it's said to get onto an executive committee, you've got to have finance skills. That's got to be a prerequisite. Now, not all women will, will have necessarily worked in finance during the business. Is, is that a factor? No, it's the profit and loss issue that is the key. So if you do uh, a study of how many chief ex or the background of chief executives, they've had profit and loss experience in their career getting to the executive corridor. Um, and that means that they then know how to make money for the business. And so it is really worrying that stubbornly um, the numbers of women that have profit and loss roles on the executive piece is so stubbornly small and the number of women therefore that are executive directors on PLC boards is only 8%. So the most senior positions in the British, uh, British business, 92% of them are men. I mean, you train up a lot of these uh, women. I mean, there's no, there's no shortage of good quality people out there. So boards are not being no. thoughtful enough in terms well, of how they look, appoint. Although this is account, so this is an account, and people can get it on execpipeline.com. They can get all the evidence and also our conclusions. Um, but if you take three of our clients, so you take uh, Thames, that's private equity, they've just announced their third woman. Thames on, Water. Yeah, Thames Water, their third woman on their executive committee, two of which have been through our programmes. And they've had a steadfast programme over the last five years to address this. E.ON, they've got three women on their UK executive committee, two of which have been on our programmes. And they have a steadfast policy to address it. And then you take M&S, um, a, a newer client for ours, but actually they are putting women through our programmes and they've got three women on their executive committee. So it takes focus, and where you focus, you can achieve the outcome. So what about uh, quotas, then? I mean, Davis considered this when he was looking at non-execs on boards. I mean, is this something that boards should be compelled to do, do you feel? I think that we do. I think that the targets... So we met our target when it came to non-executive directors when the government, through Vince Cable and Mervyn Davis, worked together and focused on it. I think having a split focus doesn't work. It's the executive piece that is most important. It's where we're seeing slippage and it's where chief executives need to target right at the top. They need to be promoting their most talented women to the executive committee because that stops the flight from the most talented people further down the pipeline. And then that means that they've got further to, they've got more women to work with because most corporations are really good at recruiting women and the most talented of graduates. What they're not good at is promoting them to the nth level, which right. is on the executive committee. I'm, I'm slightly confused here. So are, are you saying you back quotas or not? No, I'm saying I back targets. You back targets, not yeah. quotas. Yeah. How bad would it have to change them for the, or get for you not to want quotas? I don't think we need to go there because we're in many boardrooms and actually people are, are, are talking about this. What they are now seeing with our figures is they need to do more than talk. They need to actually do concerted action. And actually quite a lot of the companies we're working with are getting there. Let's hope this is enough of a wake-up call. All right, Lorna Fitzsimons from The Pipeline. Thanks for joining me. Thank you.